Hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. All the newcomers on Mancub, welcome. Glad to see you, you are here with us today. Uh, today we are on day five of the Fabtech 2020 cancellation. I know it's depressing. Trust me, I've never been to Vegas, wanted to. But we're going to be talking about Queeky. My personal favorite is the Shop Pro 510, also with a pipe attachment on it. They're awesome products. I use them every day at the Shop Pro 510. They're going to be showing you how to drop the fish mouth and also do a cutout through the pass through on the pipe. And also the second thing is going to be the MD30. It's a positioner. You put a piece of pipe on there and it rotates it for you while you weld it out. But what's going to be welding it out is going to be the, the Cricut One uh, manipulator. While that pipe's rotating the MD30, it's going to be sitting there welding it out. All right, let's get started. I'm going to throw it over to the Queeky guys. Hey everyone, welcome to Arcade New York. I'm Tim Beachler here with Koiki Aronson and we're at Koiki's North American headquarters. Uh, we're super excited today to not only be able to tell you, but physically show you how we are the process control experts. Uh, we're gonna take a chance to introduce our Cricut One manipulator and we're gonna take a look at some, some processes of cutting and welding pipe. All right, here we are at step one of our pipe demonstration. So as you guys all know, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta cut this pipe and get it prepped for welding. So the beauty of the Koiki equipment is there's versatility right from the front to the back. So here we are today with our Shop Pro in the demo lab. Uh, you guys can check out a link in the uh, video description. Jason and the boys down at Weld.com have one they use on a regular basis and they've done a full awesome review on the complete machine. But today, since we're talking about pipe, we're going to focus on the shop pipe option that we offer for this machine. Uh, the nice part is it's available right from the start of the machine or it can be added on at a later date. To go over some of the, the finer details of this, we got Tim Jocelyn, our cutting machine product manager, to go over it with you. It's very easy to create a part. We'll start with a new uh, pipe part. Uh, once, once the profile is up, you select uh, the icon that will give you your length and your pipe diameter and the thickness, the wall thickness that you're working with. Then we can add a profile, we select the icon, and we select what we want to do. We're going to add a branch uh, at the end of this pipe, and it's going to fit the pipe, uh, an existing pipe at the same diameter at six inches, and, and it forms the fish mouth. We then can go back and add another profile, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a through pipe profile in at a 45 degree angle uh, to the fish mouth and we're going to select a three and a half inch uh, diameter pipe. We apply that and it adds the whole feature on both sides, both sides of the pipe. We then go back to the icon and now we're going to add a miter cut to the end of the pipe. We add it to the right side of the profile and you can see it's actually cut off. From here, we're going to go to our cam screen. We're going to select our um, plasma system, which is the Power Max. Um, we're going to update our pipe length to a 36 inch long pipe. Check that in. Then we're going to select the Power Max 85, select the nozzle at 65 amp, and check. That's the best cutting process for this quarter inch wall material onto the CNC screen. Uh, once we hit start, we start the cutting process. Step two of our pipe project brings us out to the big house. One of our favorite spots here in our plant and arcade, um, you know, really not to be outdone by our backdrop, we're sitting in front of a tilt turn positioner capable of handling 900,000 pounds at 12 inches off the face. A uh, really cool piece of equipment we're just wrapping up, but some of our smaller line of equipment is well represented here. Um, it carries the same in terms of its structure and its capabilities, just on a smaller scale and arguably more affordable. So I'm joined here by 
by Cliff and Brian. We're gonna go through some process of, of actual welding. But before we do that, I'm excited to announce our Cricut One manipulator, uh, something we planned on releasing at Fabtech, but you're gonna see it here first. So Cliff's gonna go over some of the finer details, but the way we have this set up, we're really excited about it. All right, as Tim said, we have a couple pieces of equipment here with, uh, for our pipe welding package. Uh, first one is the MD positioner, 3,000 pound tilt rotate, variable speed rotation. On the front of it, we have a 33 inch gripper chuck. Out in front here for longer pipe sections is a PTR stand, PTR 1000, 1000 pound capacity for longer pieces of pipe. So here we have our, our Cricut One 6x6 welding manipulator. This is gonna support and position the welding process. You have six foot of powered vertical travel, six foot of manual uh, horizontal travel, Mounted on the end of this cricket is what we call our pipe package. Basically consists of your mounting brackets to hold all of your pendants, welding controls, as well as our well handy next and WU3 weaver. The Miller uh, Pipeworks is going to be an option that could be added or you can use your own. Our digital speed control option is gonna do a couple things for you. It's gonna allow you to go in and set your inches per minute or RPM based on your diameter of your workpiece. Simply input the diameter of the workpiece, your desired speed or RPM, send that speed, and start rotation. It also gives you soft keys along the bottom to control tilt, rotate manually. Hey Cliff, I got a question for you. How do you fix the speed problem on a rotator? When you got a big heavy part up there, it weighs let's say 10,000 pounds, and it rotates and it gets really heavy on one side and it, and it basically speeds up the rotator and you kind of got to make up the difference in welding and it kind of makes your weld, you, know, you kind of look bad. Uh, what did you guys do to how to fix that problem? Control and weld speed for a procedure is always important. Our MD series has been fully tested at a fully centric load to maintain plus or minus 5% of set speed. We also have an optional digital speed control this is gonna allow you to set your speed based on the diameter of your pipe, and the VFD is gonna control that speed throughout the welding process. My name is Brian Vriesen. I'm the weld shop supervisor here at Kiyoki Aronson. Today I will be demonstrating some pipe welding using some of our features. Uh, we got the Cricut one right next to me. We'll be using the Miller Pipeworks 400 with a few features for the pipe welding that I will be demonstrating. Uh, we have our well handy here that I have the MIG gun hook, hook to and there is a feature on there called the weave and we will be showing that later on in the process and here is my Miller controller for my amperages and all my phases that I'll be running in the processes and the process that we will be running will be short arc RMD running an 035 wire with a 8010 gas. Now I already got the speed program for how fast I wanted to rotate for the process and we're going to get ready to uh, do the route on this, so no further ado, let's uh, get right to her. And when you're all done welding your pipe in that, the well handy here is actually so versatile in that that you can actually take it off in a few quick steps that we'll show you right away. And you can go use it for welding on plate, flat plate, uh, T-joints, or you can even use it for cutting uh, long strips of plate. What you have to do is one wire right here, disconnect real quick like that. This handle here, disconnect the magnet on it. Take the gun off. My name is Ben Kramer. I am the portable product manager at Kweeki Aronson. Today we'll be talking about the Well Handy Next Series. This particular machine has a twin torch apparatus on it. This will allow this machine to do two welds at the same time. This machine can do a continuous fillet weld or it can do a stitch weld operation. One of the main features when we redesigned this machine was ease of use. 
this machine will display in inches or millimeters. The limit switches that are on this machine also double as positioning, fine-tuned positioning switches. They will also act as a limit switch at the end of a weld operation to stop the machine and stop the weld. The machine has guide rollers and it uses these guide rollers to keep a constant torch to work distance. The machine also has a magnetic release. This machine has a 110 foot-pound pull magnet built into it. This is what allows it to do horizontal, vertical, overhead welding operations. One of the latest developments on this machine is we've incorporated a QR code. So with your smartphone or tablet, you can now scan this code and you'll have all the user information, how to set this machine up, and parts manual, and any kind of literature that you may need to support this machine right at your fingertips. So I guess step three is the easy one. We sit back and admire our work. Uh, in closing, I want to thank Weld.com again for uh, letting us do this live session. And if we don't talk sooner, we'll see everyone at Fabtech 2021. Thanks again. All right, guys, what did you guys think of the Quickie products? Uh, they're pretty great. That's why we have them here on Weld.com. Um, I appreciate you guys for joining us here today. Uh, I'm Mancob. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, learning is key.